Hey guys, today we're going to be comparing the pros and cons of a gaming PC that's pre-built versus a gaming PC that's custom built. Oh my I have the Alienware Aurora R16. At the time of filming, it was priced around $1,300. We're going to compare it to a $1,300 custom build. It's a question I get asked a lot, especially with new PC gamers coming in. Should I go with a pre-build or should I go with a custom build? Well, short answer is always go custom. All right, cool, video's over, we can go home now. But, uh, that's not always the case for everybody. I'm here to show you the pros and cons of each and we'll see which option, whether it's pre-built or custom built, is best for you. It's going to be pretty sicko mode. So before we get started, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And every video I post will be more sicko mode than the last. All right. Let's get to it. So first things first, we're gonna talk about the process of picking out parts or picking out PCs if we're going pre-build. For a pre-build, it's honestly pretty simple. Figure out what the requirements are for the games you wanna play, pick out a budget. In my case right now, we have a $1,300 budget, and then just simply order that hoe, which is exactly what I did. And everything came in one box, which made it pretty easy to bring it into the house. Oh shit, you just busted a nut. Pib. Setup was super easy, just plug in your mouse and keyboard, your power cord, and the display port cable to your monitor. And after powering the computer on, it was pretty straightforward. Connect to Wi-Fi, log into your Microsoft account, install some updates, and update your GPU drivers. And doing all that only took me a little over 21 minutes. And at that point, I'm ready to start downloading games so I can start gaming. So it's super simple. Even my cat Klaus can do it. What are you looking at? Now moving on from a pre-build, what's the difference when ordering and setting up a $1,300 custom PC? Now this will take a little more time and research. I personally use PC Part Picker. It just makes it a little easier to get better prices and to make sure everything's compatible. Now, once all the parts are picked out, you will have to order each individual part and more than likely it's going to be from different stores. And once they finally come in, it's a little harder to bring them inside the house because they're not all in one box. Obviously, the setup process is gonna be a little more complicated because you have to build the PC. And I actually timed myself and did a time lapse of the build. And no, I'm not moving at super fast speeds. I just moved at normal speeds. And and besides from building the PC, you also have to install Windows. So I got my super genuine copy of Windows here. Install that hoe. And to get through building the PC and installing Windows to the setup screen, it took me a little over 55 minutes. Now to set up the PC, connect to Wi-Fi, install updates and drivers. I forgot to record that, but it took me about another 21 minutes to do that. And if this is your first build, don't expect to build a PC that fast. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I just have more experience experience than first time builders. But anyways, it took me 21 minutes to set up the pre-build and it took me an hour and 16 minutes to build and set up the custom build. So let's talk about the specs of the pre-build and the custom build I have here. So for $1299 in the pre-build, you get an i7-13700F, it's liquid cooled, an RTX 4060 Ti, one terabyte NVMe SSD, 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, 500 watt power supply. I try to spec the custom build very similarly while staying in budget. So on paper, it's a little cheaper at $1274.99. I went with an i5-13600KF, and I'll tell you why in a little bit. Same GPU, same type of cooler, same amount of storage, but I was able to double the amount of RAM at 32 gigabytes, and a slightly more powerful power supply at 600 watts. Now, earlier I said on paper, and the reason why I say on paper is because on paper, these PCs are spec'd very similarly. We're going to be tearing down the Alienware, and I'm going to show you, even though these PCs are spec'd very similarly, they are actually still very different. So starting with the CPUs, the pre-build has an i7-13700F versus the custom build has an i5-13600KF. So you are getting more cores and more threads with the pre-build. However, 14 cores and 20 threads on the i5 is nothing to complain about. The i5 was also $100 cheaper and this is a gaming PC, so I saw no reason why to go with the i7. The gaming performance is going to be very similar with these processors. Both CPUs are going to be cooled by dual fan radiators, so they're both liquid cooled. And the deep cool radiator definitely takes the W on this one. Just look how sicko mode it looks compared to Alienware's. 
And just a little quick spoiler, the Deepcool AIO keeps your processor way cooler in both looks and in temps. For motherboards on a custom PC, I went with a Sonic the Hedgehog ASRock B760M motherboard. And I went with this one because it fit the budget. But when you compare it to the Alienware's motherboard, why the hell does it have this L-shaped piece on there? Why can't you just make a standard size motherboard so it's easy to upgrade? You also only get two slots for RAM. That's the downside with pre-builds. A lot of proprietary parts that don't allow you to upgrade with third-party components. And just look how much cooler this Sonic the Hedgehog motherboard is. But anyways, moving on to RAM. Both the RAM in each computer is DDR5 5600 MHz. But just look how ugly the Alienware RAM is. At least make them black. The T-Force is also 32 gigs of RAM versus 16, and there's no RGB and it doesn't really look special, but it looks a hell of a lot cleaner than that ugly green RAM. Both builds have a 1TB NVMe SSD. Surprisingly, the Alienware has a faster speed SSD with its Hynix PC801 SSD, because it's PCIe Gen 4. In the custom, I went with the 970 EVO Plus, which is PCIe Gen 3, but this is not really going to have any effect on gaming. And the GPUs are the exact same, both are 4060 Ti's with 8 gigs of VRAM, but just look at the size difference. The Dell 4060 Ti has a 2 fan configuration, while in the custom build it has a triple fan configuration. And not only does this GPU have faster clock speeds than the Alienware one, it also stayed 15 degrees cooler. And for those of you who don't know, if you hear me say Dell and Alienware, it's because they're the same company. And as I mentioned earlier, a 500 watt power supply in the Alienware, which is not upgradable because it's proprietary. In the custom you have a 600 watt thermal take power supply which is easily upgradable if you upgrade your GPU. That requires more power, giving us another reason why not to like pre-builds. And as far as the cases go, the pre-build is proprietary so it can't be used with any other motherboard. Sure they give you a little bit of RGB, but the custom build cooler master case is definitely the better way to go. This is a budget friendly case, but for the money I still think it looks pretty sleek and it's pretty easy to build in. You also get tempered glass with this case, which gives it more of a premium feel versus plexiglass on the Alienware. So overall the builds are very similar as far as specs go, but obviously when you go custom, you're going to build with better quality components, upgrades will be way easier, and you just get an overall cleaner look. So now where does this bring us? Back to me. So the pre-build and the custom build have very similar specs, so they should perform very similarly, right? So to figure that out, the first test I'm going to run is the Cinebench test, the CPU test. So in theory, the i7-13700F should perform better. So looking at the multi-core test, the biggest disappointment is the i7-13700F in the Alienware. Not only is the motherboard limiting the performance, the liquid cooler in the Alienware is not sufficient enough to keep the processor cool. The 13700F kept clocking down to 4.1 GHz, which caused it to get a score of 18,644. It should be getting closer to 24,770. The 13700F should have beat the 13600KF, but because it's in a pre-build, it doesn't. Moving on to the single core test of Cinebench, once again the 13700F in the pre-build is very disappointing. This test is most important for gaming, and both processors should be on par with each other, but this isn't the case. 1694 on the 13700F versus 1924 on the 13600KF. Hmm, well that kinda sucks. The Alienware is thermal throttling the CPU, which is not good. And thermal throttle is where the CPU lowers the amount of power that the processor is actually using to keep the temperatures down. It's probably a combination of a really cheap motherboard, really cheap cooler. I know it's liquid cooled, it's just not the greatest liquid cooler. So you're not even getting the full potential of the i7-13700F when it's in this Alienware. Now moving on to 3D benchmark tests. There's a more gaming oriented benchmark test. The results should be a little closer. And it actually was. Really the scores were neck and neck. This test relies more on the GPU. So the CPU doesn't get to the point where it needs a thermal throttle on the pre-build. So that's why the performance is very similar to the custom build. Moving on to the time spy benchmark. Once again, it was pretty close. Still, in both tests, the custom build still outperforms the Alienware. I did do a Furmark benchmark test. I wanted to see what my max temps were because I wanted to see what the cooling was like in the Alienware versus a custom build. 
Now your custom build can vary because there's a bunch of different cases, different fans, different coolers, but we're just gonna test the configuration that I have. So in the firmware test, my max temp in the Alienware was 80 degrees Celsius on the CPU. And once it hit 80 degrees, that's when you saw the thermal throttle and clock down. The max GPU temp I hit was 68 degrees Celsius, which that isn't too bad. However, when you look at the custom PC's temps, 61 degrees Celsius when it comes to the CPU as its max temp and 53 degrees Celsius on the GPU. Those are really good numbers. And because the temps are so low, there's also no thermal throttle. That's another L for the pre-build. But anyways, let's move on to actual gaming. First game I actually ran was Shadow of the Tomb Raider. 1440p ultra settings with ray tracing on. This game typically does better when you have a processor with more cores and more threads, but the custom PC still comes out on top when it comes to all three categories, average FPS, 1% lows, and 0.1% lows. Honestly, both PCs play the game pretty well, so I wouldn't really complain with either of these builds, but the custom build has much better 1% and 0.1% lows, which should make the game buttery smooth. The next game I ran was Star Field. We played Starfield at 1440p high settings. In this game, both PCs were neck and neck. During gameplay, there wasn't really a difference. Both pre-build and custom build were able to play this game without any issues. So that's pretty much it for this game. The next game I ran was Cyberpunk. 1440p ultra settings with ray tracing on. I was able to average over 60 FPS with both builds, but my 1% and my 0.1% lows were significantly better with the custom build. This is probably because this PC is not going to be thermal throttling, because it has a better CPU cooler, better airflow in the case, and even though it's the same GPU, it's really not the same GPU. The 4060 Ti in the custom build is clocked at a faster speed. Also, we were able to get 32 gigs of RAM in the custom build, which which can help when playing modern AAA titles nowadays. So far, the custom build is bending the pre-build over. After that, I ran Red Dead Redemption 2. 1440p high settings. In this game, I was hoping that the more cores and more threads in the pre-build would come in handy, but once again, the custom build outperforms it. Still, the FPS in all three categories is pretty close. The biggest difference being in the 0.1% lows, so still slightly smoother gameplay with the custom build. And for some reason, these horses took turns dying instead of just dying at the same time. <laughs> And the final game I ran was GTA 5. 1440p ultra settings. This is like a 10 year old game, so you would expect each PC to play pretty well, which they did. But surprisingly, the 1% and the 0.1% lows were much better on the pre-build. So that's good to see, I guess. To be honest, I'm not sure why just in this game the 1% and 0.1% lows are better in the pre-build, but it is what it is. Whether you go with the pre-build or the custom, it was a wonderful experience. After all these tests, after everything I just told you, what does this actually mean? It means that if you're wanting an almost plug and play experience when PC gaming, buying a pre-built PC is the way to go. It took me about 21 minutes to set up the pre-build and almost an hour and 20 minutes to build and set up the custom PC. But if you don't have a big knowledge in PC building like me, then I would expect an entire afternoon to build your new PC. So if you break it down into the pros and cons of the pre-build, the pros are easy setup, one manufacturer for support, ready to go, no building anything, which pretty much falls under easy setup, and that's pretty much it. And the cons, pre-builds usually have low quality parts, they typically don't look as cool as custom builds, in this case components are underperforming, the cooling is not that great, and upgrades are almost impossible with proprietary parts. Now they do make pre-builds that use regular parts that aren't proprietary, but they're usually the cheapest parts on the market. Now what are the pros and cons of a custom build? Well the pros are, you can customize it to look pretty sicko mode. If you go with the right configurations, you can maximize the performance of your parts because you're picking them. You can typically pick better quality components. You typically can get better cooling if you pick out your own case and fans. In this comparison, it was actually cheaper to go custom, and it was only $1274.99 because I added windows on there. I was just just making sure you had a genuine Windows key because when you go pre-build they give you a genuine copy of Windows. But honestly there's plenty of ways around that. So had I not added Windows, I could have fit a 4070 in the budget of $1300. Also, upgrades are super easy and lastly it makes you seem a little cooler to people with big wieners. 
Wait, what? What? I don't know about that last one, but anyways, moving on to the cons. You actually have to build it, which is actually pretty fun, so I don't know if that's really a con. If you have to use the warranty, you have to go through different manufacturers because usually your components aren't from the same manufacturer, and it's best to have some PC knowledge, which isn't really a con, but there really wasn't any con, so I had to put something in there. Now, this video wasn't meant to knock on anyone who has a pre-built system. It wasn't meant to talk crap about Alienware. It was really meant to show you the pros and cons of building a system or buying a pre-built system. I think by now if you watched up to this point, you know my opinion. For me, custom is the way to go. If you don't want to have to do the research to build your own computer and spend time to actually build your computer and all that jazz, and you want to pretty much plug and play experience, kind of like a console, then pre-build is the way to go. But if you want to get serious into PC gaming, I would highly recommend you build your own system. There's plenty of YouTube videos on how to build a PC, I even have one on my channel. And believe it or not, there was a point in my life where I did not know how to build a PC. But I took a leap of faith and one day decided to build my own PC. And where did that bring me? And it brought me right here, talking to you into this microphone. And I don't know what else I was going to say, so, balls. But anyways, I hope this helps. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Me and my boy Klaus put a lot of work in to make these videos as sick of mine as possible. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And like always, have a sick of mode day.